All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD, or Application and Website Development Program, and in particular, the AWD 1111 .NET Framework with Web Databases class, I have been going over a series of video presentations I'm, I have created for the AWD 1111, that's .NET Framework with Web Databases class, and the book that we're going to be using for the fall 2019 semester, that being ProASP.NET MVC5, an A-Press text by Mr. Adam Freeman. All right, we are in Chapter 12, not too far into it, but we're in it. And on page 307, we're halfway down on the page, Applying Authorization with Filters. The MVC framework has a powerful feature called filters. All right, they are attributes you can apply to an action or method or a controller class because they introduce additional logic. There are different kinds of filters. More in Chapter 18. The one that interests us right now is the default authorization filter, Authorize. We are going to apply this in our admin controllers file, we are going to apply this to our iRepository that's called repository. So let's go to our admin controller. All right, and in our admin controller, right before we put in this I repository. I want to make sure I'm putting it, of course, in the right spot. Right before public class admin controller controller, so it's up a line, right there. Oops, I don't want the reference. Right there, we put in authorize. That's what's new. All right. When applied without parameters, the authorize attribute grants access to the controller action methods to all authenticated users. That means that if you are authenticated, you are automatically authorized to use these features. This is fine for sports core, where there is only a restricted, you know, one set of restricted action methods and only one user, us. You can apply filters to an individual action or to a controller. Think about that. You can be granular. So you can apply it to the controller, which will automatically apply it to everything that exists inside of the controller, or you can apply it just to one or more actions within the controller. All right, in listing 12.3, we applied it to the class. So all of the methods of the class are now only available to authenticated users. It says we can see the effect of this by navigating to the admin index URL, and we should see this. Let's see if indeed that happens. All right. Is it possible I screwed up and it won't happen? Of course it is. So let's do a save all. And again, we want to go to our admin index. So there's our admin. There's our index. We're going to try to view it in the browser. We have been able to get this up and running all the time. Previously, there has never been a problem with it. But the author says here we should get an error. And, and what it should be showing us is the effect the authorized filter has on the application. So we are actually hoping for a server error here that says the resource cannot be found. If we don't get that error, if it comes up all fat and happy as it has been, that means I did something wrong. Wouldn't be the first time, won't be the last time. But we did get the error. Okay. So the author mentions on page 309, when you try to access the index method of the admin controller, the MVC framework detects the authorized filter. Because we have not been authenticated, we are redirected to the URL specified in web.config. I have not created the account controller yet which causes this error right here. 
Notice, we, it says that's the URL we're requesting. The fact that the M, that MVC framework has tried to redirect the request shows our authorization is, for right now, it is working. All right, so I'm going to stop that and go back to here. Using the forms authentication feature they mentioned there recalls, requires calls to two static features of the system.web.security.form authorization class. Number one is the authenticate method, which validates credentials, as it says, user supplied credentials. The other one is the set auth cookie method, which adds a cookie. By now, we should all be familiar with what a cookie is. All right. Basically, a cookie is some text that gets written by a server to the browser. All right. And it's something that the server can use to make its life easier. Now, I just took a cookie and broke, broke it down into a sentence or two, and it's more complex than that. All right, but it adds this cookie so that users do not need to authenticate every time they make a request. The problem with calling static methods from within action methods is that it makes unit testing difficult. All right, the classes that comprise the MVC framework have been designed with unit testing in mind, but the forum's authentication class predates this. The best way to address the problem, the author says here, is to decouple the controller from the static methods using an interface. That offers the additional benefit that fits within the broader MVC design pattern, making it easier to switch later to a different type of authentication method if that's desired. So, we start by defining the authentication provider interface. We want to create a new folder called abstract in the infrastructure folder. All right. I do want to mention something about this. this is, it seems to be, at least in my humble opinion, a great time to do this. All right. Now, let me, I want to, I want to have everything basically closed here. All right. So there's our stuff. Okay. And again, we're supposed to come in here and in our infrastructure folder of web UI, let's close a bunch of stuff that we have open here. Much better. All right. So we have a folder in here, or do we? Create a new folder called abstract in the infrastructure folder. Well, there's infrastructure. We're going to make abstract. All right. Now, maybe I'd be better off opening up this one. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. You'll notice when you look, whoops, you'll notice when you look in here, this is what I want to show you. Now, I'm in the domain, so I, I'm, I'm going off script a little bit from what's in the book. But we have abstract, we have concrete, all right? And when you look in abstract, Notice that we what we have in there are interfaces. If something in, in an, in an object-oriented programming language is abstract, by and large, that means that you're not going to be able to instantiate it. You don't instantiate an interface. All right? You basically implement an interface, which means that any class that's down into here that wants to use that interface can but it must use whatever is defined in here. So if I'm going to implement the order processes, I must use a process order method, and it has to have those two things passed in, a cart and some shipping details. If I'm going to use the iProduct registry, okay, I have to make sure that if I'm going to use that, I've got a products, all right, Reference, and I've got a save product, and I've got a delete product. All right. On the other hand, when you look, we've got another folder here called concrete. Those are actually classes. Those are going to be, in our case, those will be the classes in here that will implement the methods that were set up in here. All right. And I just wanted to mention that. Was that, you know, mandatory or whatever that I mentioned. No, I just wanted you to hear that. All right, so inside of our infrastructure, 
right here. We do not repeat. We do not have a folder called abstract. And I think that's what we are to create right now. So new folder, abstract. All right. We want to put a new interface in there called iAuth Provider. And the contents are shown right here. So let's not do that yet. But let's come in here, add new item. All right. Code interface. I think that's the right one to choose. And we want to call this iAuth Provider. Get rid of that. Sorry. iAuthProvider.cs. There it is. All right. And they give us the code we're supposed to add for that right here. Now, so there it is. And it says we're supposed to have. So any, any class, any class that is going to implement, remember, implementation of an interface in ASP.NET looks virtually the same as inheritance. But anyone that implements this interface must have an, a method called authenticate. It must return a Boolean. It must have a username and a password passed in. So there that is. Okay. Hopefully that made sense, and I didn't say that or go over that too quickly. I can now create an implementation of this interface that acts as a wrapper around the static methods of the forms authentication class. Create another new folder in infrastructure, this time called concrete. So again, add a folder. That folder will be called concrete. All right, and in there, we want to come in and we want to add a new item. And it'll be a new class called forms auth provider dot CS. All right. So we don't even have to do that. Remember, we can right mouse click, choose add, and go all the way to the bottom and just say class, which will work just fine for us here. Form auth provider dot CS. There's that. Here's the contents. So the first part is shown here on 309. Again, don't worry because we're getting the error because we haven't completely put in all the code yet. So we will put that in right here. All right, notice no red. Everything has gone away. Now we're getting green here. Nothing like something. We'll worry about that in just a bit, okay? And I'm going to move this over just so you can see all of it. There you go. All right. It says you'll see a warning from Visual Studio that forms authentication dot authenticate has been deprecated. This is part of Microsoft's ongoing efforts to rationalize user security, which is a thorny area for any application framework. For this chapter, the deprecated method will work just fine. All right. So the author says, the implementation of the authentication method calls the static forms authentication method, so the class calls the interface, for lack of better words, or the method that's defined in the interface. The final step is to register the forms auth provider in the add bindings method in our ninject dependency resolver. All right. After a while, your head starts swimming a little bit. At least mine does. Where the heck is that again? 
All right, because I don't remember. It's not there. It's not there or there. Is that in here? There's our Ninject Dependency Resolver, which is inside of our infrastructure concrete. No, it's just inside of the infrastructure. All right. So what do we want to do here? We want to add a couple things. Notice we've already got them. The author says using sports score. Nope, we don't have them because we've got the domain ones. But now we want to add the web UI ones. Getting an error because it's not just web UI, it's web UI dot infrastructure. This is the one we just created. Okay. As you would guess, they're currently gray because we have not yet put any code in. So if we go down towards the bottom here and we go to our add bindings, all right, this is where we stand right now with our add bindings. And we have to add a line of code. All right, it's just a line, but it's complex enough and I don't want to screw it up. So I'm going to copy it in. Notice binding and what we're binding is our interface basically to our class. All right, we're about to create the account controller. This is where things will really get interesting. So we put that in. All right, let's do a save all. And I've got so many things open right here. I'm going to close a bunch right now. Sorry if, if this gets on people's nerves or whatever, but I just hate having everything in the world open here. All right. So it's time to go in and create the account controller, which is on page 311. But I'm already at 18 minutes, so this seems like a good place for us to stop.